Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So it is a super gloomy, icy day, and because I live in the South, everything has shut down. So I have a little bit more time to work on some sewing today. And I thought it would be the perfect day to work on my last sewing project of the winter season. This is going to be a coat project, and I've been a little bit intimidated by this pattern. It just looks pretty complicated. There are a lot of elements to it. So I thought it would be a good one to do more of a vlog style video and just take you along for the process. I'm going to have a really careful read through the instructions before I get started on the project. And last night I actually made a muslin for the outer part of the coat just to see how it fit together a little bit better. And I was really happy with the fit of this pattern. So that's nice. That means that's one less thing to worry about as I work on the project. But I'm just going to take you along for that process today. So let me start by showing you the fabric and the pattern I'm going to be working with. So the pattern I'm going to be working with today is the itch to stitch leggin coat pattern. I love all of the detailing and the different seaming on this coat. I think it's really beautiful. I've only made one coat before and it was a much more simple pattern without as much fitting detail. So this is going to be different for me, but I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be fun. I found this pattern by Googling a sewing pattern for the J. Crew Lady Coat. If you're familiar with that design, I was wanting something similar to that. And that's how I found this one. So I'm excited to get started on it. Let me show you the fabric. So for the main fabric, I have this cream colored boiled wool. I think this is a blend of um, wool and viscose. This is from Mood Fabrics and they have a lot of different colors in this. So if this goes well, it might be something that I'll make again in a different color. And then I thought it would be fun to do a colorful lining. So I have this beautiful blue viscose again from Mood Fabrics and this will be the lining. It's a very nice silky lining. So that will work really well, I think with the wool fabric. I've already downloaded and printed and taped together my pattern, which was a process because there are a lot of pieces involved in this coat. So what I need to do now is to go ahead and cut out my pattern pieces, but first I'm going to make some tea. So I've just laid out all of the pattern pieces for the outside and there's just a few. Okay, so that took quite a bit of time, but I've got everything cut out, all of the outer pieces, the lining, and the interfacing. So I think I'm going to start by applying the interfacing to any of the pieces that are used on the top of the coat, and then I'm going to start assembling the top section. So I'm going to go get started with that, and we'll see how far I get.
So, so far all I've done is run a little bit of stay stitching in some different places that the pattern recommended. Most of them are around the neckline just to keep that from stretching. And so now I'm going to go ahead and assemble some of the back panels. So I'm going to start with these two, which are just the center back pieces. And I'm going to sew these together along the back seam line. And then I can add these side panels to this as well. And one cool feature of this design is that all of these seams have some nice edge stitching after you sew them. So I'm going to work on that as well. So I'll just start with these back panels. So here's how the back piece now looks. I really like how the top stitching looks on these seams. So now I'm just going to repeat all of the same steps for the front. Okay, so I have the top pieces assembled and now I just need to add the yoke. So this is just attached at the shoulders here and then I will again do that edge stitching on this seam. Okay, now before I can attach the back to the front, I just need to add this piece which is called the back stay. And this will be on the interior of the coat so you won't see it at all. I just cut mine out of some scrap cotton fabric and I'm just going to baste this down around the side, armhole, shoulder, neckline, so that this stays in place. And then I can attach the front pieces to the back piece at the shoulders. Okay, so here is where I'm at so far. And I would say so far, it's been a lot easier than I expected and going pretty well. Um, I really like the way this is looking and I love these shoulder pieces, especially with the top stitching. I think it looks so cool. So the next step is to start on the collar. So I think I'm going to go reread the instructions and just see what I'm looking at for the next few steps. And then I will work on that. I'm going to take a quick stack break though, because it's Girl Scout cookie season. And my dad always gets a lot of them from someone at his office and he just brought me my favorite kind. So I'm very excited. What are your guys' favorite Girl Scout cookies? So now working with the collar pieces, there are a few different components to this. Here are the under collar pieces and then the outer piece. And then there are also these two pieces called the collar stand. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just sew the under collar pieces together by pinning these together with the right sides together and sewing this back seam. And I've already done stay stitching on these pieces in between the notches on both the under collar, the outer collar, and then also on the collar stand pieces. They're just little sections of stay stitching to keep everything stabilized. But I'm just going to start by sewing these together and then I can add these pieces to the collar pieces. <laughs> So now with the collar assembled, I'm just going to clip in to this edge right where I sewed that stay stitching and clip up to the stay stitching, but don't cut through it. And this is going to make it easier to align the next piece to this piece. So I'm just going to do this on both of these sections. And now taking the collar stand, I'm going to pin these together with the right sides together, matching the notches. Okay, so that one's ready to sew, and now I can do the same thing for the outer collar and collar stand. So now I can sew these two seams, and then after I do that, I'll just press these seams, and then I can sew these two collars together with the right sides together all the way around the edge. I 
Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow home. Golden, golden, golden. So now I have my collar all assembled and I'm ready to attach it to the coat. The first thing I'm going to do though is just to clip into the edge of the neckline here just like I did on some previous curves to help this to be easier to pin into place. And then I can just pin this together with the right size together and go ahead and baste it down. Okay, we have a collar and I am really, really happy with how this looks. I think it just turned out so well. So I'm super excited because this is going a lot better than I anticipated. Um, but next I'm just going to go ahead and sew the side seams. That's the next step. So I'll do that really quickly and then I'll be back to go over what's next. So I took a little bit of a break to have dinner and I am back to working on the coat again. I did a couple of things off camera that were just really simple. One of those was attaching the waistband to the top part of the coat, which is already looking so cool. I'm so excited about this. And so now I've moved on to working on the bottom or the skirt of the coat. And the first thing I did was just to attach the pocket pieces to the back side pieces. And these are the ones that are made out of the outer fabric. And now I'm doing the exact same thing using the lining fabric for the front side pieces. Then this will all get sewn together to form the pocket. And the skirt of the coat is put together pretty much in the same way that the top was with all of the different panels. So I'm going to speed through all of this pretty quickly because it's pretty simple construction. Okay, so I think I've reached my stopping point for tonight. I went ahead and assembled and attached one of the sleeves off camera just so I could practice. And I'll show you guys how it goes together on the second one tomorrow. But I've got the bottom attached to the waistband and then the one sleeve attached. So tomorrow should just be the sleeve and the lining. And overall, I would say it's going very smoothly. Here's how the back looks. I really like all of the seam details here in the back. So I will check in back with you guys tomorrow when I get back to it. Good morning guys, so it is the next day now. I've just gotten up and made some coffee and the sun has come out. All of that ice is about melted now, which is really nice. So I'm going to work on this project a little bit this morning before I have to leave. I'm going to try and make and set in the other sleeves. So I'll show you how that goes. I think it's a pretty manageable task to get done in a shorter amount of time. So I'm going to try and do that before I have to go to work. And then when I get home this evening, I will work on the lining. So that's kind of the plan for the project today. 
hopefully I can get pretty far on it. I'm not planning to finish it today, but if that happens, that would be nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the sleeve. Okay, so this sleeve is actually pretty simple to put together. It's made up of the upper sleeve and the lower sleeve. So that just feels a little bit different because it's not just one sleeve piece. But all I have to do here is to pin these two pieces together with the right sides together and sew this seam here. And then I'll do an edge stitch on this part of the sleeve, just like I did on the other parts of the coat to give it that nice top stitch detail. So assembling the sleeve is pretty simple. And then from there, it's just straightforward setting the sleeve in. I'm also going to run some ease stitching along the top here just to help it to ease into the armhole a little bit better, but it's just a simple sleeve construction after this. One thing I did forget to mention previously is that there is interfacing here at the bottom of the sleeves as well as the bottom of the skirt of the coat. And the pattern called for knit interfacing for that. I didn't have any, so I just used regular um, fusible interfacing. So I'm not sure if that's going to work super well, but we'll see. I think the idea there is just to prevent stretching and then to give more of a crisp um, hem. So hopefully this will work okay. I have a little bit sticking out over the edge here, but I think it'll be okay. We'll see how it goes. So now I'm just going to sew this seam in place. I'm just getting ready to sew the sleeve into the armhole, but one thing that I absolutely love about this old Kenmore sewing machine is how well it sews through really thick fabric. So here I'm working with um, four layers of the wool because of the seams here, as well as this uh, flannel fabric from the back and the interfacing. And the sewing machine has no problem going through all of these layers. I first started using this sewing machine when I was working with my grandmother for my aunt's company and they were making um, different interior items for airplanes and they would use really thick upholstery fabric. So this is the type of machine that we would use. And so my grandmother gave me this one, which is just super helpful and it just works so well for anything thicker like this. Okay, we have a sleeve. So the next step is to add this little piece, which is called the sleeve head. And I'm not 100% sure the entire purpose of this piece. I know you use it to attach a shoulder pad, um, but I'm not really sure other than that. So I'm just going to pin this in place here and then sew it to the sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and sew it through all layers here. The pattern instruction said to first sew it to the sleeve and then to the rest of it, if I was reading that correctly, but I'm just not sure that that's 100% necessary and I did it on the other side and it seemed to work okay. So we'll just try it and see what happens. So I'm just going to stitch this in place and then we'll talk about the shoulder pads. Even if the sky is falling down. So the last step to making the outside of the coat is to add shoulder pads to the shoulder area. And when I first read that in the instructions, I was a little bit surprised, but then I thought about it and it makes sense with a tailored piece like this that you would want that extra structure. Now, shoulder pads are not something that I keep around in my sewing stash, but fortunately for me, I recently got a lot of different clothing items from my step-grandmother who used to be a model in the 80s and they are all 80s pieces. So this is one that I would probably not wear because it's not really my vibe. 
vibe, but it had shoulder pads in the shoulder, so I just really quickly ripped them out of this jacket, and it was actually really cool to see how it was constructed. These are what they look like. So they're a little bit bigger, I think, than I want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and try the coat on with these on and just see what I think, and then I can just trim these to the right size. Okay, scratch what I said. I actually think that these work really well and are just the right size. So I'm going to sew these in and see how it looks. Okay, so I was looking at the instructions and I was wrong about the way that this is stitched in because it's not stitched to the sleeve headpiece, it's just stitched to the seam. So that's just a little bit different. So I'm just going to sew this in place with some hand stitches and then I just tacked it on either side of the yoke right here. I don't think I've ever made a project that has so many things going on on the inside between the outside and the lining. So this is really fun. It almost makes me feel like I'm engineering something even though I'm just following the instructions. <laughs> All right, let's see what this looks like on the other side. Very nice. It gives it that nice structure that you expect from a coat. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, so I have both sleeves now set in and the shoulder pads added. So this is where I'm going to stop for right now. That is the entire outside of the coat done. So when I get home tonight, I'm going to work on the lining and we'll see how far I get on that. One thing that I'm finding so interesting is just seeing all of the interior of this, all of this construction on the inside. There's the pockets, that back piece, the shoulder pads, the little shoulder um, sleeve cap piece. So there's just a lot going on, but it's really interesting to learn how it goes together. Well, hey guys, so it's been a little bit of time. I ended up going out to dinner and now I'm looking so tired. So I am going to work on the lining now. I've already finished the outside of the coat. It's hanging up over here, looking really good. So the lining should be pretty straightforward. It's just simple techniques. I've read through the whole instructions for the lining. So what I think I'm going to do is turn on a movie, make some tea and just have a cozy couple of hours and see if I can get through the lining tonight. So I will update you guys along the way.
so here is where I am stopping for tonight. I have stayed up much later than I probably should have working on this, but I've added the lining to the inside after a mishap with sewing the sleeves together the wrong way. I finally got it the right way around, had to undo that once, but I think it's looking pretty good. So all that's really left to do is a little bit of hand finishing on the inside of the lining where there is a gap here in the side. And then I need to add the buttons and buttonholes. I also need to press this a little bit better here, but it is almost there. So I will finish it up tomorrow, hopefully. Hey guys, so it is Saturday afternoon and I am about to get back to my coat project, but first I'm going to go to the fabric store and look for the right buttons for this project because I haven't picked them out yet. So I'm going to go head to Joanne Fabrics and see what I can find. I'm also going to look for a few things for a few other projects while I'm there. Now, one thing that I didn't realize when I was looking at this last night is that I somehow got the bottom front pieces a little bit crooked at the hemline. So I am going to need to go back and fix that today but other than that it should just be the fine finishing so I am planning to finish this up today I definitely stayed up a bit later than I intended to working on this last night but I'm glad that I got so far on it that I feel like I can finish it up today but for now I'm going to head to the fabric store and see what I can find Okay, so I finished all of the interior now. So the lining is all finished on the inside. And the last thing I need to do before I move on to the buttons and the buttonholes is to run some edge stitching around the front of the coat. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then I can just mark my buttonholes and sew on my buttons and do all of that. And then this is going to be done. I am so excited. I can't believe it's so close. Okay. I just popped open the window so you can hear the rain. Okay, so I just went through and marked where all of the buttonholes go. So I'm going to go sew those. I am going to do a test on my sewing machine with some of the scrap fabric just to make sure I have all of the settings the right way for the buttonholes to turn out well. And then for the buttons, I've decided to go with these little faux tortoiseshell ones. I need to take the staples out of these, but I thought this looked really similar to the one from J. Crew. So that's what I'm going to do. I really love how all of these colors look together. The tortoiseshell buttons, the blue lining, and the cream colored wool. So I think it will look really pretty. So I'm going to finish up these last couple of steps and this coat will be done. So I just sewed the last button on and I'm just sitting here looking at this thinking, how did I make this? I feel like it looks so cool and I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to go try it on and see how it turned out. I'm gonna let the sun shine and the I got this and there's some food, but I have this. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. <laughs> Hey 
guys so it is Sunday afternoon and I just got home I decided to take the coat out on its inaugural outing today and it has been so much fun to wear I'm just so happy with how this project turned out as soon as I sewed the last button on last night and looked down at the project I was just thinking to myself how did I make this it really felt like a impossible task so I'm so pleased with how it came together so let me show you how it looks I'll make sure to get some shots that aren't just in the mirror as well but here is how it looks and oh you got a little sneak peek of some fabric for some later projects back there I am just so pleased with it I really love the contrasting buttons and I think all of the seams look so nice with that edge stitching I'm really happy with that detail the collar I'm just really pleased with how it turned out oh and there's the cute blue lining I wore a blue sweater today to kind of coordinate it has the side pockets and I love the length as well. And while I was out today, I also had this scarf on, which I feel like looks really cute with the colors in the coat. Also kind of matches with the boots I have on. So yeah, I am just so excited about this. And then here is just a look at the coat on its own. So you can see some of the details a little bit better. And here is the lining. So I'm going to go take some photos of the coat this afternoon now that it's finished. I'm just so excited to have this in my wardrobe. I've wanted a cream colored coat for quite a long time. So this will fill a gap in my wardrobe. And I definitely could see myself making this pattern again now that I've given this a try. I'd love to try it in other colors. I know that Mood Fabrics has the same fabric in a lavender, which I think would be so much fun. So maybe I'll work on that in the future. But I think the thing I've learned from this project is that if I want to make something that intimidates me like this pattern did, I need to just take it a step at a time and spread it out over multiple days because that worked really well for me. I think oftentimes I try to just sew as much as I can at a time and I sew until I get really tired. So it made more sense to kind of quit while I was ahead and break it down into smaller steps like this for this project. I definitely could have seen this going multiple directions. So I'm really pleased that it turned out well. And the instructions for the pattern were so well thought out and broke it down into really manageable steps as well. So I think that helped too. So I would really recommend the pattern. It's a little bit intimidating, but once you break it down, not too bad. And I feel so accomplished with the finished product. So I think for right now, I'm going to get ready and take some photos of this coat. And then I will talk to you guys in a little bit. I just made some of the pomegranate white tea from Trader Joe's, which I really, really like. It's really good, especially if you put a little bit of honey in it. And I think I'm going to watch a movie and drink this tea. And I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for the whole process of this project. I know this was not as tutorial based, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. I will be back very soon with a wrap up of everything I've made in the last two months, as well as a fabric haul and some plans for the next couple of months. So I hope you guys will look forward to that. Thank you again for spending your time here on my channel today and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!